It's time to revisit the diesel's interior. And before I show you why, I need to pull it out. The, the interior, not, yeah. Piece of the puzzle. Well, actually, it's heavier than I remember it. it. Must be about 25 kilos. That. Imagine the fuel economy now. But it's all stripped out, and I'm betting you there is moisture under here. Yep, lots of it. If that comes as a shock to some people out there, it shouldn't. Being in a cold climate and the way I operate the vehicle, I mean, it's, it's just condensation, basically. It's, it's unable to escape. You really want as breathable layers, to be honest, or, or layers that are actually like completely bonded with no air gap to the metal. And then that way you wouldn't get that. But in my case, it's just a rubber, a rubber spunk mat just laid on there and... <sighs> no wonder there's moisture in the vehicle. my favourite sound, all right? It should come out now. <sighs> it's going to be kind of painful, but uh, yeah, it all has to come out. Just checking this out the mats down pretty firm there's no air gaps and uh, we do have water though sort of all here uh, it's underneath everywhere actually but it doesn't seem to have gone under the mat there's just a few areas you can see it's built up there and here I've ripped this away just to check because I wondered whether it was going sort of underneath there but it doesn't look like it but I'll just leave that there now to dry out a bit um, the mats all stuck down real good because I used a heat gun and a roller so nothing's really got underneath but you can just kind of see you know, the beginnings of some not so desirable stuff happening if it were left longer. Well, the Jeep's all cleaned out and I've dried it as best I can and removed the foam that I think's in the problematic areas like in the corners, around the sill, in the floor pans, the lowest points. but. Seriously, look at all of this stuff that's come out of the vehicle. But anyway, it's time to play around with some leather. I'm gonna try with the, uh, the seats, see what I can make them look a bit better. I do actually have a complete seat back home. Obviously they don't really fit in suitcases too well, so I just thought I'd bring the leather with me. Um, but this is in really good condition, so um, 
Now I'll roll that up somewhere and uh, that'll definitely be going on the four litre. For some reason I did imagine it to be much nicer than this one, but um, it isn't actually. <laughs> It's uh, it's not as nice a colour, and I like the pattern on this is is much better. There we go. It's a pretty nice piece of leather. That would look good in the activity room. Well, there we are. That's the original leather seat from the diesel behind me that I left back in the UK before we went away. That's gone on really easy, but I will say that if you look at the difference between the original front seats and the original rears, you'll see the fronts look a lot better. And that's really just from treating the leather, which I need to do. I've still got a lot of the old products in the house from when I used to do a lot of leather work. Um, you know, I was well known for my gimp suits and um, I'm pretty sure some of them are still going today. But um, yeah, I will treat this like I treat all of my um i can't help it i'm sorry i've decided on an end result for the rear end but before i get there i'm ripping everything out and sanding back any corrosion in preparation for some new paint Well, I've got a decision in mind, uh, but before I get into any painting and putting new materials down, just want to thank Junior Davis, a guy in the US, sent this over a new hood latch. I got it for a very reasonable price off of eBay from him. Um, they're a lot more expensive where I am. Going to fit this first. Considering everything I'm doing, and I'm in the realms of touching things up, I've decided to vinyl wrap the gullwing boxes with some fake leather vinyl I bought a long time ago, but never used. So there we go, it's all sort of finished. It's not amazing, like you can see that's the top, you won't see that. And the inside I've left like that and I've just put a little bit of U-channel just to keep the vinyl edge on but uh, it's gonna go in like that it should look better than it did before you know hopefully well it's times like this I feel the limitations of the space in the workshop but can't let that stop you just got to get on with it but the inside of the vehicle is all ready and mostly the back actually that was the place that suffered the most but that's stripped and prepped and primed ready to go there was a bit of corrosion starting that's dealt with now and i'm going to be using this stuff these cans were given to me by a chap out there called Jonas in sweden who i chat to on instagram occasionally so really appreciate that mate not actually used this stuff before so keen to see what it's like these cans are mostly designed for touch-up work there we go yeah so you, it's not the kind of spray can you have up close you hold it far away you can kind of see managed to do basically that much space so it's not bad it's basically what it said it would do on the tin Well, 
it's been a few days since I did the spraying. Uh, this was three cans of the Rattle Can Raptor Liner, but it looks good. I mean, it's just come out really nice, a decent finish. And um, I even did the step and a little bit of the bumper, just some touch up stuff, which I'm pretty sure that's really what you should be using these cans for is, is small projects and touch up work. Anyway, something arrived in the post. So this is kind of the stuff I had before, pretty much exactly the same actually, but just black. Kind of something I wish I'd done in the first place. So if you are gonna buy this stuff, I probably would just recommend getting the black stuff. So that sound deadening is all done. And like I said, I have used the product incorrectly. Normally you would just put pieces of it everywhere to sort of change the acoustics of the panel. Um, but I've used it like a, like a coating really, just sort of take a lot of noise away because that's all I'm gonna use. And the black coating on top hasn't been perforated at all. So that is a good sign. I thought it would just get scratched off straight away. And I'm kind of getting to the stage now where I'm putting the interior back in. I've done one of the gull wings one side, I'm just about to do the other. But before I get there, I'm just putting in these panels and what I'm doing is adding foam to the other side of the plastic interior just to try and take a bit of the noise away. Um, so when I'm in the car and I'm screaming as loud as I can, people just can't hear me, you know, people, well, they can hear me, but, but they just think I'm, they think I'm all right. But then what is all right these days? What is, what is, what is all right? You know, we just don't, The top tip I'd recommend is to just put these straight through the wiring loom and then it sort of acts like Loctite. Ah. Time to put a gullwing in. So the boxes are actually separate to the hinges so they can be removed and there's two bolts that basically go through and bolt into the hinge and support it and keep the box in place so it's not just that little self-tapping screw that's more of like a setup thing so it looks a little bit like this you have a bolt at the back that's maxed out onto the thread there so it goes through the hinge and it sort of supports the hinge in position. It could be done a much better way, but because I kind of, you know, build all this stuff for the first time, just based upon whatever the hell I'm doing, it tends to end up a little bit improvised. But um, I guess the advantage being the two things can be separated. This is a very time consuming job. I'm getting through it. Things are looking better. A few little cracks and things here and there, but this interior is super brittle actually in some part. But to clean up some of these fabric pieces, I'm actually using thinners. Not the best stuff you can use, but you just want to go easy with it, but it will literally clean anything. Not paint thinners, but kind of like an industrial thinners really for cleaning. So, um, it does work. I'm pretty much doing all my interior with this as I'm reassembling it and it's essentially why it's taking so much time. But if you do use thinners, just know that if you brush it over these painted parts here, with these stickers and things, they're going to vanish.
putting on this um, KY jelly now. And this is gonna take a little bit of time because you kind of need to get it into the leather. See the difference? Buff that one up. Still a little bit dry. And that one's come out nice too. So it may look like I'm rubbing in like a kind of grease, which basically is what I'm doing. Um, but it isn't dubbing or anything like that that you would see, that you'd put on your boots, for example, before you went walking in like the moors or whatever, but it goes hard, this stuff. Um, I used to use this on all my, the leather stuff that I used to make, but the thing is it has to be warm. You have to get it hot. You can see it's sort of getting rid of what appear to be like discolorations and things and it should stay that way for a very long time and it's going to take a quite a few more treatments really to get it looking really really good but over time it's going to improve but it isn't sticky to touch it doesn't it won't like go into your clothes and you just wipe the excess off the surface unless you're doing this outside in the sun then it's gonna all absorb in well i'm not gonna lie that was a lot of work um but let me show you so this is probably something i should do outside but i've sort of run out of time really this week um really most of the this isn't it's gonna be pretty underwhelming it's just like saying look here's a standard cherokee interior which is actually a lot of it parts like the paneling is from um the stuff i managed to get spare anyway was off of a a um, pre-facelift model it fits okay but you know some of it is damaged and other parts just needed modifying it doesn't really fit so well but um, you know, it's okay. I might, I might repaint some of this stuff, but I'll, I'll do that at a later date. But really the main thing was just to rip everything out, start again with a new kind of internal area, you know, just not have anything on top of here. So water can be cleaned up easily in the winter. So apart from the leather, which I think turned out real good, actually, although those aren't the original headrests, they're still in the UK. Um, I think it's pretty good and the gull wings look nice as well and I've put sound deadening in there as well just to take a bit of the tinny noise out here too you know everything's kind of been kind of dulled down hopefully it would be be better to drive so um yeah but in terms of like how it looks inside it is just really fairly standard and I am missing a little piece there which I just need to try and find or you know, eventually I'll pick one up somewhere if I ever find a scrap Jeep again. Um, but yeah, I'm glad I got the new lever in. It actually looks okay. When I say new, I mean original. It looks all right. Um, the mats are nice because obviously they just cover up all that stuff I really couldn't care less about because it sounds good. Um, you know, it's really solid. You know, you've got foam and silent coat there. So I don't really need anything there and it's easy to mop water up, but... Yeah, seats have come out good. Had to put a new seat belt in because the original spring on the the other one down in there just blew up. You probably saw that earlier on in the video. Um, but yeah, yeah, it's all right. It's, you know, nice and clean. Should be easy to look after. Um, front seat obviously gets the most use, so it's looking pretty worse for wear down there. But, you know, it's, it is what it is. It's all right. There's only so much I can do with that. Um, but this is something different that was foam there before if you remember like I was complaining that, that it just was getting trashed obviously the foam's still there but I took the rubber from the rear and made like a section that kind of glued on to this entire centerpiece with some sound deadening underneath it so hopefully it'll be pretty quiet I mean you know it's all packed with foam and stuff like uh, to try and take the noise out of it really you know, so it's all sounding pretty solid, but um, yeah, and this piece too, you know, never had that piece before. And the, this this stuff along the top and down there, this is all stuff I've kind of put in now. So uh, these Molle panels here are from Trail and & Company, and uh, the link's in the description if you're interested there. 
they're pretty good. I, I generally have just a few things on them now and then. Um, I have that on there, but I've moved that now down there just because it just seems a bit more logical. Um, but yeah, you can see that rubber bit, you know, that should help anyway. And uh, under here, there's no rubber, obviously. It's just the uh, sound dampening mat and that's it. But this seat gets a little bit less use, so this one looks pretty good actually. But um, oh yeah, I, I sorted this out, so it's really rigid. So I made like a metal bracket, put that in. You can buy them, but you know, for me to get that here in Sweden, the shipping just always takes forever and, and it costs a lot of money. But um, there you go. It's basically the interior rebuilt and a bit cleaner and a bit quieter. Never mentioned the roof. It's got the same sound dampening mats that I put in the rear, but silver. And over the top, we've got foam. So it's pretty good for heat and also for keeping heat out. But uh, yeah, I haven't bothered with anything that, with that yet. It is so much easier having it black because um, it just doesn't get as dirty when you touch it, if you touch it. Well, there you go. That was a shit ton of work and for fairly standard results. Probably a bit underwhelming, but I wanted to get back to something a little bit more stock, just easier to clean, a bit better on the sound deadening and without the issues of the water getting underneath all the foam and all the rubber matting and stuff I had in there because um, that was becoming a problem and there was corrosion beginning here and there. So with the way it's built up now, it should be pretty sweet going forward and not too loud to drive on long distances and things. Um, tomorrow I'm off to pick up some new tyres, same size 35s. Um, but they're going to be hopefully my new winter tyre. And these ST Cooper PORs, I might pull the studs out. For the life of me, I just can't be asked to take them off the beadlock, so I probably won't bother to do that. Um, but I know some of you are probably like thinking, where the hell's the 4 litre mic? You said that was going to be in the, the next video. Well, the last Q&A video I did, I left for the UK. Went back to the UK, had to go back for some stuff. I came back here. Hence, I brought some leather seats with me. That was the most important thing, obviously. Um, and uh, you know, I, I just, the parts for the four litre just aren't here yet. I thought they would be. Um, and, and I thought, well, while I've got the time, I wanted to rip the interior out and just get stuck in and get how I want it moving forward. So I just thought I'd do that. So like I always say on this channel, the stuff you see me doing, it's just the stuff I'm doing anyway. I'm just filming it for you, um, you know, and just making a video. So, um, you know, maybe you didn't enjoy this, maybe you did, but harmonic balancer, brakes, loads of internal parts, lots of stuff, new, well, the leather seats now that came out of that, which are actually a lot nicer than the ones that went in, all that stuff gonna be building up on the four litre. And, you know, as soon as those spider gears come, front ends rebuilt and in here it comes ready for the chop shop, because that's what it's gonna be. It's gonna be corrosion repair first and paint. It's gonna suck. But anyway, thanks again for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and um, I'll see you very soon in another one. Cheers to the Patreons for supporting. Take care. See you soon.